We have a very special guest here on our hotline today. That would be Lorenz Larkin, UFC middleweight, who is facing Costas Philippou at UFC Fight Night in Cincinnati. That is coming up on May 10th and will be part of the Fox Sports 1 card. And Lorenz is actually in the co-main event right before Matt Brown takes center stage. Uh, Lorenz, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, no problem. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I mean, man, this is a huge, huge fight for you. I mean, you got the co-main event spotlight here. You're taking on a guy in Costas Philippou, who's right in the mix of those top 10 rankings. Uh, how how ready are you to come out here and dominate in this fight? Uh, I'm I'm really ready. You know, I've been training hard. Uh, my camp's been pushing me. I've been pushing myself, so... You know, I'm really anxious and, and ready to get in there. A lot of people say you you have like probably more of the striking edge. You have that kickboxing and boxing background in your arsenal. Uh, do you feel like that that's your strength coming into this fight against a guy like Philippou? Um, you know what? I, I I never know. You know, you never know until you know you're in the in the cage, and then and then you're able to tell because you know who who's to say. But you know, I just I just rely on how hard I've been training and 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 let that you know carry me in the cage and 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 let my work show instead of you know me thinking that I have an advantage over him in a certain you know technical department. But you were uh, you talk about your training and you did a little training with uh, Bisping uh, leading up to his fight. How did that go out for you? Oh, it went good, man. I, I don't know. Whenever I can, I, you know, I, I try to get out there and help him for his camp. So, you know, and unfortunately, you know, he lost, but, you know, he'll be back in there and, and, and he'll be winning again. So you, you actually train with Michael a lot? Yeah, actually, um, yeah, for most of his camps, I'm, I'm always in there. So, you know, me and, me and, uh, Mike have a good relationship and, uh, he helps me out a lot too. So, you know, you know, whenever I can, I, I'm trying to get out there for him. You know, I think Michael Bisping has one of the worst uh, raps in MMA. I swear, I think he's one of the coolest guys. He's funny as as hell, and, and man, the, the fans just don't give him a break. Why? Why is that? Because you you hang with the guy, you know he he's not a bad dude at all. Yeah, you know, uh, it's just one of those things where I guess uh, you know just by watching him, cause I'm you know he knows too. Before I even met him, you know, I already had it in my head that this guy, you know, was a big jerk. So <laughs> I, I, when I came up there, I was already expecting him to be, you know, a certain way. And, you know, when I, when we met and talked, it totally changed my whole outlook on him, you know. So, and it's crazy now, too, because when I go up there and, and my friends are like, you know, dude, why are you helping that guy out? You know, he's, he's you know, everybody hates him and he, he's like super arrogant, blah, blah, blah. And then when I take them up there with me, they come back, you know, as we're driving back from uh, practice, they're like, dude, that guy's like my favorite fighter now. <laughs> See? Yeah, dude. Once you meet him, every all those, you know, past perceptions are thrown out the door. Yeah. It's crazy. It totally is. Uh, I, I think he, he definitely deserves a better rap. And you know what? I think after the fight, you, you know, you talk about, yeah, it sucks he lost the fight against Kennedy. But, you know, it was nice to see the two of them in the cage afterwards, you know, put, squash the beef, so to say. Mm -hmm. You know, it was good to see. And, and I, I think that also, you know, that put a little like, change the perspective for a few people on Bisping. And I hope, you know, hopefully we get some some cheers in the future instead of jeers for him. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm i pretty sure it'll turn around, man. It's just, I guess it's probably just word of mouth, you know, or just, you know, back uh, well, a couple fights ago, but man, that guy's one of the most just humblest, generous guys I've ever met, especially at that level. Well, uh, you know, Lorenz, a couple of fights here at the UFC that you've had recently haven't gone your way, and we actually have a fan question for you from Twitter and that fan would like to know if the loss to Carmont stings at all and if you would like a rematch against him at some point. Uh, he said, <clears throat> they said if it stung? Yeah, did yeah. The, did, yeah, cause it was a, let's be honest. I mean, I know, you know, you're, you're a humble guy and you're not going to sit there and talk any trash, but you won the fight. 
Dude, you won that fight. Yeah, you know, it, when it happened, you know, it did, but um, I guess, you know, that's just leaving it to the judges' hands, you know, but, I mean, yeah, it stung. I, I got over it, but, you know, I just came up with it, or not came up with it, but I just kind of realized that, you know, eventually I just get back on the winning streak and I will meet him again. So, and then, you know, then I can get my redemption. <laughs> it's a good, that's a great way to look at it, you know. Um, but uh, one of the things that I loved in that fight, and, you know, Lorenz, I've been watching you since the Strike Force days. Remember, you came on, and, and there was just so exciting to watch you fight. You're so flashy, so much fun in the cage to, to watch that kung fu style. But, you know, one of the things I noticed in that fight was your amazing takedown defense. I mean, you reminded me of a young BJ Penn, the way you hopped around on one leg like that. It was almost impossible for uh, Carmont to get you down. And when he did, you were up like a quick as a hiccup. Have you always been that uh, agile and had that ability? Yeah. I would say once when, you know, I start wrestling more and, um, and and working on my takedown defense, we kind of found that out. <laughs> but um, yeah, it kind of it kind of plays into my you know advantage. So you know, it helps me out a lot. Uh, I'm curious to know, being that you're in the UFC now, you've had like we talked about the Carmon fight. I even added scored for you. Uh, so technically, you should be two and one, but you know things happen, like you said, leaving it to the judges and such. How important is it for you to really make an impact in this fight? And do you feel it's necessary for you to finish this fight to put your name back on that radar? Yeah, you know, it's not to finish this fight to show show everybody, you know, that you know how I should be fighting, you know, and, and I feel great coming into this fight and. And, you know, it's crazy because, uh, you know, I, I've been, you know, reading what the fans have been saying. And, and and it's funny because I don't think sometimes fighters give the fans enough credit. You know, the ones that are the, the diehard fans that really pay attention to the fight and really give their advice on, you know, what you're kind of missing. And sometimes these guys are just as good as, you know, are, are telling you, you know, info about yourself just as good as, you know, Rogan or, you know, any other commentator, you know, so, so I, 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 I take ears to, you know, everything and, 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 you know, I truly need to get in there and, and get back to old me and, and really just push it. And what does that old me entail? Have you, have you switched up a lot of things coming in in preparation or not so much? Yeah, you know, just, just, grinding, grinding my guys and, 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 and being in their face more, you know what I mean? Not, not worried about so much counter punching and, and all this other stuff, just being a lot more offensive than defensive. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I, I hear outside of the cage, you're a bit of a ping pong player. Is this true? Yeah. Yeah. I play a little ping pong. I dabble. You dabble? You know, my career goes south and, you know, I might be on the, uh, American team, you know, in the, in the, in the Olympics. <laughs> like Forrest Gump, you're going to get your own paddle, play with it? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nice. Well, Lorenz, listen, we wish you the best of luck. And, hey, really quickly, uh, you know, I see you changed that Twitter picture of yours. You, you got the Ultimate Warrior on there. You uh, Were you an old-school wrestling fan growing up? Man, I was a big wrestling fan when I, uh, when I was growing up, man. And Ultimate Warrior was my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite wrestler. So. You know, I'm going to show them a little tribute at the Wayans, man. Nice, nice. I look Good. forward to it. Awesome. I am very much looking forward to that, and I'm glad that you will do that because the warrior should be honored. I, mean, <laughs> I, I used to paint my face like that, too, I admit it. But All right, Lorenz, we are actually all out of time here, but we really appreciate you joining the show. Okay, thank you. All right, best of luck to you, man. Again, Lorenz Larkin. He'll be taking on Casas Philippu, UFC Fight Night Cincinnati, the main event of that card, Matt Brown versus Eric Silva. That all goes down May 10th 